Welcome back to another one of my shitty vlogs. In this vlog, I'm gonna talk about the things that I've been struggling with. Mainly, this is gonna be on my newest course, which is on dynamic feature modules and clean architecture. And I'm also gonna talk about Work Manager because I've, I've decided to implement Work Manager in this new project. So first, I wanna talk about something that I mentioned on my podcast yesterday with Gabor uh, Zuinden. If you didn't watch it, I'm gonna put a link up over here for you to go watch that, that podcast. A lot of people said it was really great, so I recommend going and watching that. We talked about a lot of different things, but mainly we focused on, I guess, what I would call uh, modern Android development. So check that out. So anyway, something I said yesterday that kind of confused a lot of people. I got a lot of messages about this. So the reason I said that is I wasn't quite sure that dynamic feature modules are production ready. And I'll give you three reasons why I thought that. Number one is you probably already know that you couldn't write UI tests in the dynamic features. So if you created a module, you literally could not write espresso tests inside of that module. Now that's a pretty big deal. If you've been watching my vlogs, you know that I also pointed you to the issue tracker that Google uses to track that particular issue. Actually, you guys did a really good job of starring this because originally when I first saw this, it only had 12 people uh, starring it and now there's 111. So thank you for everybody who started this issue and we have a, a nice update which I'll share with you on this issue in uh, just a minute here. So the second reason why I was considering not using dynamic feature modules is because it's really difficult to set up the dagger stuff. You basically have to either use some serious dagger shenanigans to get references to classes that exist inside the modules and communicate between modules modules or you have to use reflection. So there's a, it's either way, it's not an easy process. And I, and I didn't wanna add more complexity onto something that is already complex. The third reason was there's other things that just didn't work out of the box. For example, I tried to use work manager and you had to declare the work manager dependency inside of the app module. You also had to declare the work manager dependency inside the child modules. And you had to implement this special fixed dependency specifically uh, for work manager for dynamic feature modules, which Google created, they know about it. It was literally a, like think about your build.gradle file. You put a specific dependency in there for this issue. Long story short, there's a lot of things that aren't perfect. Now the complexity stuff I can deal with, like just because work manager has an issue, it's a known issue, whatever, there's a fix. The dagger stuff is complicated, but still I think that the dynamic feature modules positives outweigh the cons. So I would probably still use it. The big one was the, the UI tests. If you can't write UI tests in your dynamic feature modules, I basically think that it's a waste of time because production apps will not use it. It's just, I would call it not production ready if you can't write UI tests. It just doesn't make any sense. But I got an update on the issue tracker that I just mentioned. So why don't we take a look and see what the Google developer said. Okay, so here is the issue. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that today I left kind of a sassy comment. I said, I don't know how dynamic feature modules could be considered production ready if you can't write UI tests. This was today, April 15th. And you can see that shortly after, so I made that comment at 9.37 and I got a response at 9.40. It says, we have been tracking this internally. Uh, Android Studio version four beta two is capable of running instrumentation tests within dynamic feature modules. And it says there was a regression in one of the 4.1 Canary builds, which has since been fixed. So this is great news. Basically, this means that in my mind, the main issue with using dynamic feature modules in production has been solved. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna take their word for it. I'm gonna download Android Studio 4, the beta, whatever I need to, try it out and see if I can write some UI tests. So basically, given that that solves the UI test issue, I will definitely still be creating a dynamic feature modules course with clean architecture. And just to clarify, if for some reason I decided not to do the dynamic feature modules course, I would still do it just at a later time when dynamic features were more mature and what I would call production ready. But if everything goes the way that this guy says, we should be good. Now let's take a look at the app that I've been building building for the dynamic feature modules course in clean architecture. I'm gonna show you the things that I've been working on, some of the things that I really like that I've implemented and some of the things that I've been struggling with. Also, we're gonna talk about Work Manager because this is pretty much my first ever experience using Work Manager. I've heard a lot about it, I've heard a lot of really good things and I have to say my first impressions are really good. Work Manager seems like it, it has far exceeded my expectations and I'm gonna talk about why in just a sec here when we take a look at the app. 
Okay, so here we have our very, very fancy note-taking application. Uh, you can see right away that some of the things that I've implemented since you watched last was this search view. So if I do like a search up here, cool, that will search the title and it will search the content of the body of the notes and search for the keyword cool and find matches. So here you can see there's definitely not cool in the title, but if I was to click on one of these, uh, it says, you know, cool stuff. So obviously that's where that got, that's where that came from. Now this app is still buggy. You can see that the progress bar is showing right now. It definitely should not be showing. So I'm just going to click away and get rid of that. Also, if I click on these list items, notice that it kind of highlights the wrong one. So if I click on that one, that actually highlighted the correct one. But if I click on that one, oh, that looks good actually. So never mind. Yeah. So I should mention that it's not complete. There's still bugs. There's still things to work out, but this is, uh, there's a lot of things that I've done since I last showed you. So I cleared the search. Now let's uh, see some of the other things that I've implemented. I've implemented pagination. So for those of you who don't know what pagination is, it means that right away, if I query, you know, 30 notes, it's not going to query. If there was a hundred notes in the, in the cache, it's not going to query all a hundred at once. It's only going to query 30. Then when I scroll to the bottom of the page, it would query the next 30. If I scroll down further, the next 30 right now, there's not that many notes in here. There's only like, I don't know, 10 or something. So obviously pagination is doing nothing, but generally speaking, if you don't know what pagination is, look into it. It's something you need in all your applications. It basically is a system uh, for displaying pieces of the list instead of displaying the whole thing. So if, if you have, you know, if you can imagine querying some data from a network, from a cache, you don't want to display a hundred list items, 200 list items, a thousand list items, a hundred thousand list items, whatever you want to display it in pieces and then increment the page and get more and more of that list as you go just for performance. So pagination, search view, and I've also implemented an ability to delete notes. And this is where the work manager comes in. So if I want to delete a note, say this WTF note down at the bottom or in the middle here, I can delete it two ways. The first way is I can swipe this out and it will then say delete pending. If I click undo, it gets re-added to the list. So what's this is actually kind of a little, a little bit of a complex thing that I, that I set up here. So what happens when I swipe it out is it creates, I'm using MVI architecture. So I create a state event that goes to my, my use case. I'm using clean architecture. So it goes to the use case and it creates a job for a work manager. And what the work manager does is it says, okay, here's an incoming job. And then it, it's actually a special type of work manager called a coroutine worker. So I can use, uh, I can call suspend functions inside of it. I can delay. It works on a background thread, obviously. So when that is created, it delays for a time delay. I think I wrote, I set it to uh, 2000 milliseconds. So two seconds. And that's, that's the time that that snack bar shows at the bottom. So you can see if I swipe that out, it says delete pending. But if I wait long enough, that, de that delete pending goes away and the note is actually deleted. So like I said, what's happening here is it creates a coroutine worker. It starts it off, shows the, uh, the snack bar. And then if that delay is that time elapses, then it executes the delete. So basically it sits there and it waits to say, is anyone going to cancel me? Is anybody going to cancel me? If nobody cancels it, then it goes ahead and deletes the note. And I think this is a good system. I think it's a really cool system. Like I said, work manager has really exceeded my expectations and I'll tell you um, what particular expectation has been exceeded. So I did not expect you to be able to observe live data from some kind of asynchronous worker. So work manager, and that's what it does. So that's, that's one of the options of the things that you can do with it. Basically you can, you can create this work send it off to a background thread to be done, but you can also observe it, observe the results from wherever you are. So I think this is really cool and I'll show you what I mean. So if I go into one of these notes, this new note, for example, and I can actually still delete the notes from this detail fragment. So what I'm going to do is going to click this. I get a dialogue that says, are you sure you want to delete this? So let's click yes and see what happens. I get navigated back. I'm going to click undo and notice right away that that note got re added to the list. Now the progress bar is still showing again. I said there's still bugs, there's still things that I need to work out. So the cool thing there was I was in a different fragment, I started a job, and then I navigated to a different fragment and I, and I observed the result of that job and took action based on the result. The result in this case was the delete operation was undone, so that note was re-added to the list. Pretty cool stuff with Work Manager. I really love how you, you have this kind of global 
asynchronous job manager thing that you can access basically from everywhere and observe results. That is very cool. Now, if you're curious about this course that I've been talking about where I'm gonna be using uh, dynamic feature modules, clean architecture, work manager, Kotlin coroutines, all the kind of things that I've been talking about, MVI architecture, Dagger, lots of really cool, very employable skills these days. These are all kind of like the hot, uh, hot topics on Android. If you're interested in learning about these, make sure to go to codingwithmitch.com, which is my website, register an account, and that way I, you'll receive emails and updates for when I actually publish these courses. So if you're interested in them, you can check them out, you can watch the demo. I got tons of free stuff too. So if you go to codingwithmitch.com and go over to courses, there's lots of paid stuff, there's lots of free stuff. Go there, check it out, see what kind of interests you. Basically, I got courses on everything to do with all the new stuff for Android from beginner to pretty advanced, I would say, and always creating new stuff, you know, every every month, pretty much, I, I try to create a new course. Now, one last thing before you go, do not forget to hit the like button. You need to tell YouTube that you like these videos so they get recommended to other developers like you who are trying to navigate the Android ecosystem. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.